CT Stealth there, and what we're about to do is we're about to start converting this to proper bone placement and naming schemes. So I'm going to select my hip and just do Control D, and one more time, and I'll get. Uh, I now have three sets of bones. They're all in the same exact spot, and because of that, um, all that orientation and stuff, I don't have to redo. So this is always good that you want to do this with your bones. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to name these so I don't get them mixed up and I'm going to go to prefix hierarchy names under modif modify up here and uh, I'm going to type bind. So this is my bind bones. You'll notice the hierarchy named everything there. I'm going to get rid of that one and prefix names. This one will be the FK and again if you would have like multiple bones you'd also put R for right, L for left, you know, with an underscore. And I'm going to get rid of this two. Now modify. Here we prefix. Uh, this one's the IK underscore. So there we go. Now all of these are named FK or IK, so I won't get the the bones mixed up. Now I'm going to start with the FK hip. So I'm going to control H the bind bones and control H the IK. And now I'm just left with my FK hips here. Now I have a script that I wrote in order to make this simple. And as a rigger, this is always a lot better. If, you know, great scripts for yourselves. But basically what I do is we need to create a controller. And I'm going to start this from scratch just to show you and it needs to be a certain direction. So I'm going to hit apply, see where the rotate is. And okay. It looks like it's, it's just going to create it circular, flat, just straight up. So I'm going to rotate these one of these directions. Alright, now I'm going to freeze the selection. Now, this controller... No, oh yeah, sorry. In order to do that, uh, just right click and go to freeze all. And you always want to do this because you won't, this is the main controller. This is what the animator is actually going to um, animate with. Uh, hold on one second. Okay. Now, um, so all these need to be zero or one for the scale because at, the animator is going to keyframe and they want a home position so the home position is always going to be zero or a one if it's a scale that being said I'm going to rename this what I'm going to call it is uh, this is the FK controller so I'm going to put FK underscore and this will be for the hip and then I'm going to put control just like that now I'm going to group this and I'm going to do FK underscore hip control. No, hip null uh, group. And this is basically going to absorb all of the rotations that's going to be on this hip control. So I'm going to select my hip and select my, not my circle, but my group. And go to constrain point constrain orient and you'll notice that this circle is now in the exact same spot as my bone now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to delete those just like so and now I have this controller with no um, I don't know what to call this they're all zeros and ones so all the transformations are frozen and if you'll notice in the group, it has absorbed all those rotations and moves that I just took place right there. The point and orient constraint was only meant to get it into position. And now that it's actually there, um, I can hook this up. So I'll select the controller, go to Window, General Editors, and go to the Connection Editor. Make sure it's reloaded on the left side, which it is. And then I'm going to select my bone, reload it on the right side. Now, all of it's going to do is to influence the rotate. So when I rotate the controller, I want it to rotate the bone. So I'll click the rotate here. And why is the hip control selected on this side? 
right there, FK hip and rotate. Okay. Now you'll notice the bones are now yellowed. This means that it's being influenced by another connection. So now I'm going to go to the rotate tool and you'll see as I rotate the controller, it rotates the bone. Now I have a script to write this for me. So I'm just going to click the little button and it's not working. Of course not. That's what this long little thing is for. This is actually my script. And And there's a deck layer. Okay. Well, that's nice. All right then. I guess I am not using my script for now. Something. I must have added something while I was typing it. I have no idea what it is. Oh well. So. You basically make each one of these controllers for uh, each leg here. So that's um, it's kind of boring to show you and to keep doing it over and over again. But basically rotate, freeze all, group it. I'm not going to name it right now. And just kind of click the, that's the knee, so click the knee, then click the group, constrain, point, constrain, orient, and then come into the circle, delete the orient constraints, then window uh, connection editor. Reload the left for the circle, reload the right for the knee, go down to the rotate and rotate. Now, um, I only did one extra controller just to show you this before I'm about to run out of time. Um, when I rotate this controller, you'll notice that this controller still say, stays there. But if I still rotate this controller, the rest of the bones move. So in order to fix that problem, it's really simple. You just grab the group for the knee control and you drag it under the hip control. So you kind of get this stair right here. So as you add each control, anything below the control that's going to be influenced, you just place it under there. And it has to be like a little stair step there. And you would kind of understand it as you as you go. So um, that's mainly it. You would just do that for each one of these things. Uh, I'm out of time, so I'll see you in the next video.